Hey guys, it's Mapper here once again, and recently there's been quite a bit of news coming out about uh, the Incursion League and Path of Exile related things, and I wanted to go over uh, quite a few of those right now, and uh, specifically wanted to cover the topic of um, Path of Exile getting invested in by Tencent, and I basically don't really have much of an opinion because I'm just another idiot that doesn't really know what's going on and can only understand what I'm being told by this, but... Everyone else seems to have an opinion, so fuck it, me too, let's go. So I do want to cover all the little uh, teasers and stuff that have come out recently on um, Incursion League, but first of all, about the Tencent stuff, and uh, the fact that Tencent, a giant Chinese publisher that has um, quite a lot of other games, has invested a majority stake in Grinding Gear games. This is the announcement they gave us, and then a bit of a FAQ uh, from, I guess, the team and mostly Chris himself. Now, like I said, I generally don't really know what the hell's going on with this sort of stuff except for what I'm told. As far as I can tell, uh, Grinding Gear Games has been invested in uh, largely by this company who is uh, quite rich, quite wealthy, has a lot to do with gaming already and they're just going in on the majority stake of the shares so they basically have uh, the largest say and investment in the company meaning that they can you know swing their uh, pull around a bit if they need to but chances are or from what we can understand of this they're just investing so that they can hopefully make a return on their money by letting the game do what it's doing and keep growing and make more money because uh grinding gear games and path of exile has been on the right track as far as we can tell for the past five or so years and uh, just getting better and better, bigger and better and all that, uh, attracting a lot of attention from this sort of genre, the Diablo game genre, and uh, getting better and making more money. So company identifies that, they want in on this action, they acquire the majority of shares and all that, and uh, they will get the majority of returns uh, based off of the um, profits as of now. That, as an absolute pleb, is my understanding, and from everything else they've written, which you can read here, you can also read on the Reddit shitstorm that happened a few days ago, and plenty of other streamer uh, opinions, which I haven't actually looked at, so I may be repeating some of what um, plenty of other people have been saying. As far as I can tell, nothing's really going to happen too bad because uh, what they're telling us is everything's going to be business as usual. We're still going in the same direction as always. Uh, Tencent doesn't have a past history of ruining other games that they've invested in, like, as they say, uh, League of Legends, Clash of Clans. Uh, they've, you know, gone invested heavily into those or bought them and... The companies have still gone ahead and made their own games as they were going to and in the same direction they were going to. So I don't see any reason that they would want Path of Exile to go in any different direction since they've been doing well and they've invested in them because they've been doing well. They want them to keep doing what they're going to keep doing and have been doing and uh, just progress the game as it is being, you know, a pretty good free to play uh, with some nice microtransactions for pure cosmetic shit game that is dominating the uh, Diablo style um, hack and slash or MMORPG, I think you'd call it, market. So I don't know if what really there is to say, what the huge discussion is. I think everything's pretty above board. They've told us all they can or all they need to for us, the mere plebs, to, uh, you know, be fairly rest assured about the direction of the game and I have no reason to believe that's a lie or that they they didn't do their um, due diligence and uh, research about what's happening as they said they did and uh, it just should be completely fine and the direction of the game if you've liked it in the past and you've supported in the past should still be totally fine for you. You should still be investing, I think, your money into the company uh, through the supporter packs because that hasn't really changed. They still do need you to support them in those supporter packs to keep the game growing and to keep the game um, alive because primarily that is how they still will be making their money. The supporter packs, the microtransactions they sell, you buy them, you support them. That means that they can keep doing what they're doing and the new investor is happy in that they're making money. So a common complaint I've seen recently is that um, you don't really want to support or go in on these supporter packs anymore because they're backed by such a large company and it doesn't feel like the same indie company anymore and they don't really need your support anymore and uh, I kind of think that's bullshit because for the past uh, I, I've been buying supporter packs since I first started the game like five years ago long before I was a streamer or anything and I just like the game and I want to support because I like the shiny stuff inside of it and I thought it was worth supporting the game and it's been probably like 
two years, maybe even three years since I've uh, felt that I actually need to support the game anymore. And uh, because it's been doing well enough, it's big enough and successful enough that they're doing fine. I don't think like I need to support at this stage or at that stage because uh, they have already been a big company as far as I was concerned ever since then. I've just been going in on the supporter packs because they're still worth it uh, for, you know, supporting the game and I like the shiny stuff inside of it so it's probably not going to change how I play or um, pay for the game that I'm currently playing at all and it's not just because I'm a streamer or anything it's because uh, I still do think that um, they're worth going in on the direction of the game is still fun I'm still enjoying it they're still pu uh, punching out a lot of content for us I don't really expect too much except for a new league every now and again because that refreshes the gameplay for me and uh, that's really exciting still but they keep giving us new content, new expansions, new all this kind of shit and the game is still growing happily I think. So at this point you still want to support um, if you like the game and the direction they have been going in because they still need you to support. They're not just going to um, be backed by this company now and uh, expect to be making zero dollars and that is a good investment. No, they're trying to back Path of Exile because they thought it was a good investment because it's going in a good direction and it's making good money. And it needs to keep doing that for you to keep enjoying the content they're currently putting out. So for the most part, I think that's pretty much all I have to say about it. Uh, I think everything is still looking just fine. I wasn't even um, really concerned about this news when it first came out until I started reading all of the, you know, shitstorm across the Reddit about how bad this is. I didn't at all feel that. It just seems like it was a decision made by Chris and the team as a pure financial and business decision for the company and themselves and uh, to still be allowed to, you know, continue going with their game and their vision of how the game should be. So I don't think there's much to worry about there. And yes, I have seen that a lot of people are worried about the um, ethical and moral um, implications of the company Tencent themselves because of some social media stuff that they're doing um, in China. But uh, I don't really know too much about that. All I more or less have to say about that is a lot of things out there and a lot of um, things you do and consume and use as consumers, there are a lot of bad and uh, just evil shit from companies going on um, on the large scale that uh, you can't really do too much about unless you just straight up stop participating in all sort of consumer lifestyles, which as first worlders, we pretty much can't and don't. So I don't see how this should be any different uh, because the game itself is still fine and the game itself that we're playing is still going to be going in the direction we want it to, apparently, as far as we can tell, and the company that has been running this game still thinks that that's totally fine, and the people they've invested with or um, have let invest into them are okay with, like I said, they've screened for five years, lots of offers, and this is where they've landed. So why not trust them? Why not just let them do what they're doing? And, uh, you know, even still having this transparency for us is a good thing. And I don't see any reason for concern. And then moving on into some of the uh, actual incursion announcements or just little teasers that have come. Uh, I did just get back from running training. This video has been split in kind of half, so maybe my voice is a bit more fucked at the moment because I am kind of uh, wrecked. But anyway, um, one of the teasers is that there will be incursion upgradable uniques. So kind of similar to the prophecy system where you could take um, some leveling items and with a correct prophecy upgrade them to some bigger, beefier items. Likewise, with some of the incursion at Sawatl uh, items that are somewhat leveling to begin with and a bit weaker on the um, you know lower end side can be eventually upgraded to much bigger, beefier and in most cases just very different items altogether using the Altar of Sacrifice in the Apex of Ascension, the top tier room of the Sacrifice sequence um, throughout the Temple of Atsawatl. So near the very end, after you customize some rooms and all that, you can, once you get some of these uh, little sort of leveling uniques, eventually turn into much bigger, beefier uniques. Um, in most of these cases, they're just sort of, yeah, leveling uniques, a bit low level. They do some decent things. This one, for example, is very nice for uh, leveling because it's got, uh, at level 32, quite a lot of flat LE damage and should be very useful in plenty of builds for leveling. 
but then it turns into something completely different and uh, we already went over this item um, like a few weeks ago which is a, a pretty interesting one for um, soul eater use and uh, as well as that chaos damage giving ignite chill and shock and they also preview just a couple more items like mask of the spirit drinker that uh, in total can give you up to 300 life regen per second if you also have a decent amount of energy shield to begin with and then it can be upgraded to this item here which is actually a pretty interesting one in my opinion because uh, it lets you it gives you one max life per two intelligence and that really does let you build more of a life based um, hand of wisdom and action character which you know traditionally has something like 1300 int on the top end uh, with that amount of int you can get quite a tasty amount of flat life from this helm and that means that uh, you can still focus on a lot of int and a lot of int throughout the tree and then have an absolute truckload of uh, life through this one item which then allows you to actually build a life based character rather than always having to go CI or low life for those things and uh, I think that could make some pretty strong um, Hoa, uh, Molten Strikes and Spectral Throws as life-based characters which is something I may look into when um, I you know, start the league with these kinds of items. And then we also have uh, these boots over here, which then get upgraded to these boots. Uh, they've got some pretty big downsides of losing 7% max mana per uh, second, while giving you a bit of mana, a bit of movement speed, some onslaught, which is not that great since you can get onslaught just about everywhere, but up to 20% dodge um, to attack and spell hits. Uh, if you have, let's say, 5k mana, and overall, I think I'm not sure I like these too much personally because uh, I really don't like mana degen or losing mana, especially when you're a heavy mana based character that is um, revolving around mind over matter. So I'm not a big fan of those, but I think people will find some use for these regardless. We then have a slight preview of a corruption that was buffed uh, just as an actual corruption itself on a belt slot. So in lots of these slots um, across the uh, entire character, they're going to be uh, reworking and buffing certain corruptions so that uh, you can get quite a lot more useful things. So 14% skill effect duration on a belt is absolutely pretty nice for quite a lot of characters, but uh, let's say Blade Vortex specifically, uh, means that corrupting things should be just a little bit more worth it. And then that leads on to the next uh, highlight, which is the ability to have two corruptions on an item. So as you can see here, there's plus two level of socketed duration gems and 5% reduced fire damage taken. Those are both corruptions on the armor slot here, and you can have two of them. And the reason we can do that is because the corruption chamber. So in the Incursion League, they have a preview here for us. In the Incursion League, Alva Valai will thrust you into various rooms, blah, blah, blah. One of the end game things is that you will end up coming across the corruption chamber, which is is going to let you chuck an item into uh, the chamber or whatever and corrupt your item. So instead of a traditional varling of the item, you can corrupt it through this chamber. And if um, you've upgraded your corruption chamber up to tier three, and it becomes uh, more difficult throughout uh, your temple to do so. And then the entire temple becomes more difficult once you get to the tier three of it and then complete it. You can then corrupt your item and it has one of four outcomes. So currently these four outcomes are your item will be transformed to an elder or shaper rare with random socket numbers, colors, mods and links. So this is a good way of creating uh, certain elder bases or shaper bases of, you know, high item level items that are otherwise going to be pretty hard to get. So we're looking at steel rings, opal rings, astral plates, that sort of thing. Uh, otherwise, all of your item sockets will be changed to white, which is a pretty exciting one uh, because previously you could only kind of do that with a really lucky Valorb or some bestiary crafting stuff. But there's definitely some items out there that want this type of um, result. Two corrupted implicit mods will be added to the item. So you can have two corrupted implicits as we just saw uh, instead of just the one. And there's going to be plenty of uh, new ones there too. So quite a lot of interesting combos with that or your item will be destroyed. So if you have a particular item that you want to get uh, white sockets or corrupted implicits, then you still have roughly a 50-50 chance of getting some sort of decent result or breaking your item because your item being destroyed is a brick and your item being turned into an elder or shaper rare, that's also a brick, though there's going to be a slight outcome of something nice happening instead. So it is a pretty big gamble still and it is uh, just going to really mix things up quite a lot with the corruptioning 
But uh, it sounds like it's going to be kind of tough to get going. Uh, if you read all of this, it's going to be a sort of a challenging encounter to get up to that point. We then got previewed a bunch of divination cards, uh, so quite a lot more being up added to the current game. And uh, overall, um, quite a few interesting ones. I'll just go over just a couple of the really nice ones. So Shrieking Essences, nine of them. That's pretty handy. Uh, always nice to craft with some of those. And if it's a decent enough thing to farm and get, that should be a fun one. Faded Connections, that's a six link prophecy to just get a straight up six link item. No doubt that's going to be pretty damn hard to get. Uh, so, you know, chances are we're not going to be seeing many of those, but it could be a good little uh, currency boost if you find just one of these uh, cards. And it's Eerie Item, not quite sure about this one. Uh, maybe if it gives you Uber it's Eerie Items as well. Otherwise, it's probably going to be fairly useless. Uh, Bell of the Beast is pretty nice. Then we have a Pordros, which is pretty damn nice too. Jeweler's Touch, for the most part, I think that's garbage because uh, you can already buy them for like 15, 20 C after about a week into the league. And uh, I never really use these anyway. I always try and jeweler my own items and then link them since uh, I found this to be kind of a waste of time. Parandus Mana over here, that means that there's an actual reliable way of getting Parandus Mana and completion for your entire Atlas at this point. Um, a Watcher's Eye, which is the unique jewel that you get from completing an Elder of yellow or higher um, map quality. That's pretty fun and definitely really cool. If you can get this reliably enough, that'll be something you definitely want to farm and get around uh, for the RNG and for the gambling. And otherwise, three times essence is pretty cool. Could get some corrupted essences in that, but probably quite a lot of garbage. And Nemesis item, of course, you could get yourself a nice corrupted headhunter with maybe some of the new implicits out there. And then lastly, for the news that's been coming out, they have announced that they're running with the uh, just idea of an exile con. So just a bit of a meetup um, in potentially about November 2019, looking a year and a half away. Uh, somewhere in Auckland, New Zealand, just a big sort of um, Path of Exile convention type thing where there'll be like announcements of um, expansions and uh, updates and whatever else to do with Path of Exile. Uh, you know, just a usual convention for this type of uh, gaming setup and all that. I personally have never actually been to any of these things because uh, I live in Australia and rarely are they ever you know, available to us. Some in Sydney, Melbourne, that sort of thing, but I haven't gone out of my way to go to those. So I haven't really ever been to any of these things. Um, however, people um, would probably like to know if I'm going to go to this sort of thing. Uh, honestly, I don't have any idea. I really do not plan that far in advance. I usually don't plan anything further than like two weeks in advance because I'm just that kind of person. I procrastinate and I'm lazy and I like to keep my options open. Uh, this sort of thing though, honestly, if I'm still streaming and playing a lot of Path of Exile in about a year's time, then yeah, I'd probably be interested to hit up some New Zealand action because New Zealand's a lovely place to go. Uh, it's a good visit regardless of ExileCon. And yes, uh, I'd probably like to attend um, just because Path of Exile is pretty awesome. And I certainly wouldn't mind meeting some of the people that play it. So I really can't give any more um, actual committal than that. That's the best I can do. I would probably like to go if I was still uh, doing this stuff. It's not very far from Australia. So, you know, something like a four hour flight, not too bad. And uh, yeah, it'd definitely be something I'm going to be looking out for, but I can't promise I would be there. So currently, guys, that's all the news I have for you. It was mostly just um, throwing out my opinion about the Tencent thing so that uh, people don't have to go searching through VODs and um, asking me nonstop about what I think about that. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, just a few more things coming in for Incursion League. I will hopefully have a uh, starter build video up um, in the next week or so for the actual Incursion League. And otherwise, I'm still dicking around on um, Flashback and then probably on Bestiary. But yeah, good things, I think, coming for Incursion. It looks really big, uh, just primarily because of the skill reworks. The Incursion itself is kind of a side thing for me. Uh, leagues are always fun, they're always great, but it's definitely the core updates to the game that I'm always looking for. And uh, getting a lot of skill reworks, are the, those are the kinds of things that actually keep me very engaged and um, entertained and playing for uh, the few months that the league is actually running. So that's the end of the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed the uh, bullshit I talked. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.